Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Nalo's Thrift Talk. I'm Lola. And I'm Nay. And today we have a really, I think, kind of fun episode, although it's probably not everyone's favorite topic. Uh, tips for giving great customer service to our customers. If you're a reseller on eBay or Poshmark or Depop, you know, we all have our fears, our anxieties about, you know, ending up in certain situations and having to address buyer concerns. And we wanted to talk about how we deal with some of those instances. Um, Nay, do you have anything to add? No, I think that's great. And we also are going to share some negative and positive, but we're going to show how we don't let the negative get us down. You know, you, mm -hmm. can, kind of, you can kind of um, still maintain a positive momentum even above, even amongst, you know, your occasional negative occurrences because it, it happens. It's going to happen. If you sell online sooner or later, a negative experience is going to happen, but the good outweighs the bad. So we'll Very talk. well said. I think that's yeah. a great way to sum up what we have to say today. Oh, Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, everyone in the chat. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I see Anne and Lisa see. and Heather. Heather is Brian there. has a McRib, which I didn't know was back again. Oh, Bri so Brian, let me tell you about Brian. Brian has been counting down the days, literally on his Facebook feed. I I've seen it. Oh, oh my gosh. It's dropping November 1st. And and he's he's been like T minus how many days until the McRib drops. So I guess it it came out a little early and he was thrilled and he well, had a I'm picture. very happy for you, Brian. Yes, I'm very happy for him too. He, he took a picture of his first McRib and he said it was everything that he expected it could, it would be. So thrilled for you, Brian. <laughs> okay. I obviously have never had a McRib being vegetarian. <laughs> I will trust that, uh, that it's good. All and right. Angelique says that, the feed is cutting off the first 10 to 20 seconds, which is interesting to know because I try to wait a couple seconds yeah. after StreamYard's yeah. already said we're live. So maybe we need to wait a little bit longer, um, but thanks for letting us know that. I will think about that in the future. That's weird, yeah. Uh, well, okay, well that is good to know. Thank you for that feedback. Yeah. So before we dive into our main topic, we have our usual segments. Yes, so. What are we wearing? You want to go first, Nay? Because I've seen your outfit and it is very cute. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So I have on a, so these earrings are, I actually, they're not technically thrifted, but they're, they, it, it counts because I bought these on Poshmark from a small seller a couple years ago. And of course I wear these all year, even though I figured today it's, it's near Halloween. Mm -hmm. so it'd be perfect. But since we are a spider loving household, we have five pet tarantulas. I wear these all all year in honor of my love for spiders. So, Very uh, cute. yeah, they're really cute. And then my scarf is a vintage Vera, uh, Vera, not Bradley, Vera Newman scarf. Right. So <laughs> it, it's from like the 60s or early 70s. I'll show the tag in a minute. And my sweater is, it's a Gat sweater from 2009. It's a long, comfy cardigan. Mm -hmm. It is, interestingly enough, it didn't come with the belt. I mm -hmm. believe I got it on dollar day, like oh, quite a while ago, like a, a few years back. So I paid a buck for it. Didn't come with the belt, but that's not a deal breaker because I just wear it as like an open cardigan anyway. And I think Lola, I could probably take those off if I wanted to. Yeah, I would do it very high for it. Something else to go. Yeah, in. it's probably not worth doing just because you could run the risk of cutting yeah. into the knit fabric of the sweater itself. Um, but if you if they're really bothering you, you could probably do it. I didn't really bother. I think I and I think I could find something else maybe mm -hmm. that could go with it. Uh, so anyway, this so this sweater is an interesting. It's a Gap sweater from 2009. I did check out the tag because all Gap, Old Navy, Banana, a lot of those stores they will have the year, the the season and the year on the tag. So this is from the winter. 09 collection and interest. It's a really interesting combination of, uh, of fabric. So the knit is, um, viscose, hmm. acrylic, uh, rabbit hair and, and cotton. That's it. Cotton. Oh, wow. That is really interesting. So it's a really weird combination. It's, and it says 5% rabbit hair, which I think is actually, that's Angora, not mohair, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Angora is the rabbit hair. But it says rabbit hair. So mohair comes from Angora goats, so it's confusing. Right. But so anyway, um, so it's a weird combination, but it's super cozy and soft. It's not itchy or anything. Um, 
Yeah, so, so 5% Angora is enough to give it that little like fluffy halo, but usually it's mixed yeah. with like maybe wool and acrylic, if anything. I'm surprised yeah. about the viscose and stuff, but viscose that cotton, yeah. should make it wear and last for a long time because those are Heather, it's not so as the rest of it's itchy, it's actually really soft. It's not itchy at all. And underneath, this is a thrifted pajama top, believe it or not. Oh, but yeah. but I, you know, you never know. So it, it kind of matched my color theme. So yeah. And um, we match today in color scheme, which is so which funny. Is totally so, unplanned. Let me show you real quick. I have, I do have some pictures to show. <clears throat> so this is what my scarf looks like laying flat. I will pull up oh, the. Uh, sorry, thanks. If you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's it's what the so scarf pretty. is like laying flat. I just wanted because it's on my head and I can't take it off. Yeah. So on the bottom right, you'll see the Vera. So these Vera mm -hmm. scarves are pretty plentiful. You can find them. You know, they're pretty plentiful at the thrift still. This is probably 60s. But the thing is, they don't have a lot of resale value unless you find a really good one or sell in a lot. But I love them and I collect them. And they are just so pretty and they're so well made. So here's the tag. It is a little fuzzy there, but it's actually, you can see, you can see the edges there that are hand rolled. And it is uh, hand, it's hand rolled made in Japan. So this is, you know, pretty high quality. And I think that yeah. label is probably actually more like seventies. It's a little, little on the newer side, but, and then my earrings, here's a close up of my earrings from Poshmark. Yeah, well, Lisa says Vera does well on Etsy. I definitely oh, seen sort of a range of prices for them. I've had a few and I'm always like, is it worth listing? Am I going to enjoy it more? Just keeping it. Um, oops, but I love finding scarves like that at the bins, especially because you're paying like nothing for it by weight. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, oh. uh, yeah, I know they're there. And I think I probably paid like a buck for this scarf. I don't mm -hmm. even remember when or where I thrifted it, but I know I thrifted it and it was probably like a buck. So, um, yeah, they're really cheap and, and they're so pretty. And so I love scarves all year, but especially when it gets to be this time of year. Because you can wear them around your neck. You can wear them as a hair mm -hmm. accessory. There's so many things that you can do with them. They're so versatile. And just like that pop of color just makes your outfit. It just kind of folds it together. Totally. So. And your right. earrings. So, Lola, what are you wearing? Oh, you showed your earrings. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, those are so cute. I did show them, yeah. What a great Poshmark find. Yeah, they, Heather, they were. They're Heather wants cool. to know if your boys are going trick-or-treating. They are. So my oldest son is now, um, he's 13 and I think this is going to be his last year. Cause he was kind of oh. iffy. He just wanted to get a mask. He didn't really want like yeah. a whole costume and he was kind of, and now he's like, Oh, can I go with my friends? So I think I'm going to let him go with his teen friends. Cause he's a teenager now. My other two are still really into it, but I think this might be kind of his last year and now he's doing the friend thing. So that's um, very fun, though. By the way, I did want to mention I have a sticker on, a special sticker on today, because oh, you can see. You voted today. Yes, we have early voting here in uh, New Jersey, and I voted today. It was super easy, in and out of the polls, no line, and I got my sticker, so. Very yeah. cool, and I am looking forward to voting um, next week. My town is voting for municipal fiber, which I am super excited about. So I really hope it passes because I cannot stand Comcast. And as they might know, uh, I've been having issues with my Wi-Fi that's been impacting the show a couple times. So if we get municipal fiber, it probably will take it. That's time. awesome. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. So um, we voted for, um, we voted, we had a board of ad vote too. Mm -hmm. So, and those, those elections are really important. Local elections know, are so, so important. Yeah. yeah. So. And I am wearing, Jess, thank you for noticing the oh, color pretty. in my hair. The same colors. I Not also thought it was hilarious when I saw Nay's outfit because, like, my hair matches your scarf. Yeah. Which didn't occur to me. And then yeah. my shirt matches my hair. Um, <laughs> John, Jason's mom, Peggy, yes. She, she is notorious for her internet issues, so. And uh, Julie's asking if Declan's okay. Oh, yes. Thank you. So I will, uh, just a quick thing. note. So my son, I put this on Facebook. So those of you who are friends of me on Facebook saw it. My friend went to a, my friend, my son, my son, my eight-year-old son went to a Halloween event at his school the other night. And as we were driving out of the parking lot, I realized that he had opened his bag of candy and he proceeded to choke on a Skittle. So I... 
Yes, it was Very. terrifying. He turned blue, everything. Uh, he was actually, his, his his airway was completely, completely obstructed. So I pulled him into the front seat. I, you know, I had cars beeping behind me. I didn't care. I was saving my son. And I remembered my days of CPR and I was able to do the back blows and I did mm. dislodge it and he's fine. He's just traumatized, but thank yeah, you. Easily. Thank you, Julie. So it does show the importance. I think I'm going to get recertified in CPR now. You know, I was thinking the same thing. You just never know when it's going to come in handy. Yeah, because it's not just for parents yeah. with kids. I mean, you never know like when mm -hmm. anyone that you love or even yeah, a in public, or, someone and you can save a life. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, and I know that some of the CPR techniques that I learned back then, of course, I'm a little rusty because it was 2009. It was a long time ago. Plus they've changed it's some changed, of the techniques. Yeah. So I, yeah. I am, okay, so this was a wake up call that um, it's really good to know that. And um, also, you know, so just a little public service announcement there. If you can get certified or learn those life saving techniques, you never know when it's actually going to happen. Uh, you know, you don't think it's going to happen, but things like the it other night. Was, yeah. yeah, it happened. And it happened in, in the, you know, in the blink of an eye. So, yeah. So I am wearing a shirt that I bought on eBay a couple weeks ago, and I will talk about it again later in the episode. Okay. But last week, um, as I mentioned, it was my anniversary um, last week. And the Red Sox were sadly no longer in the playoffs. They're no longer, they're not in the World Series, but um, they were in the, the playoffs. And it was sort of one of the reasons we picked our wedding date was that it coincided with the ALCS. And finally, for the first time since we got married, seven years later, there was a Red Sox game on our anniversary. So we went and oh. I went on eBay and got us both um, novelty silk Red Sox shirts. Oh, so this so is mine. Oh my God. And it has Ted Williams. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, so, I love it. Lola, and Chris is amazing. It's like yellow and it has a bunch of Ted Williams' stats all over it. Um, so unfortunately, this one did not come in time for the game. I oh. ended up wearing the one I bought for Chris and then Chris wore their jersey. But um, next season, we will be all prepared. And now I have, you know, two more it's, Red Sox shirts. Silk. In it looks like it's silk, yeah. Yeah, it's silk. It's both of them were 100% silk. The brand on this one was like Silk Club, I think. It looks like it's 90s. Yeah, definitely yeah. one of those like eight, late 80s, 90s. Late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. yeah. So cool. I love it. And then I didn't even think about it till I put it on, but there is like some of the magenta that mm -hmm. matches my hair. So um, You're just coordinated today. Yeah. So funny. And love it, then Lola. we have our thrifted home decor. Yes. So mine is obnoxious, a little bit obnoxious anyway. So I thrifted this. Gosh, I don't know what I paid for it. I got it a few years ago. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cute. So this is part of my always my, you know, every year I put it out for Halloween. Mm -hmm. And it's a haunted house. And here is what it does. It just takes two double A batteries. That's adorable. So yeah, it's a little obnoxious, but it's, it's cute obnoxious. So oh, no. yeah, and then it, the light, the eyes just stay lit. So so yeah, that's my, uh, I think I paid like a couple bucks for it. I don't remember, but it was probably like two ninety nine or dollar ninety nine mm -hmm. or something. I, I don't, I don't remember paying a lot for it. So yeah. Love when you can find those, those seasonal decor items, you know, and they become part of your, your annual decor. So yeah, totally. Heather's asking what I use for my hair. I actually did go to a salon for it. Um, there are a couple very like cool, funky salons near where I live. So um, I got my hair cut a few weeks ago and just really liked the stylist that I went to. So um, I went back to her just to do a little bit in the front and mostly because my hair is so dark, like I need a professional to bleach it and do it right. Or it comes out looking very brassy and orange, which I've learned uh, by trial and error. So um, yeah, love the house, but that noise definitely. Yeah, the noise, it is a little I feel, I feel like you can say that about a lot of ha Halloween, especially, but holiday yeah. decorations in general for sure yeah my kids love it though they love especially my little one he loves to play it yeah. mm -hmm. um so i've talked to before about my vintage um camera collection and i've been like trying to pare it down because i am overrun with vintage cameras um but i can't <laughs> every time i'm like maybe i'm ready to part with one then i decide i really like it so this was um 
a Polaroid camera that is probably the most common. And I thought I would highlight it because it is so easy to find these and people may see them and think they look very cool and wonder if they're worth anything. They do look very cool. They're yeah. not worth anything. This is a yeah. good one to know that you yeah. probably should pass. Yeah. Um, so it's called the swinger. Um, it's called the swinger because you could hold it and swing it yeah. on your arm. Um it took a roll film that is no longer made. So there is no way to buy film for this camera specifically. A lot of other Polaroid cameras, there are um, companies that start making it again. There's other things you can use. You can somehow like DIY a, um, a way to use a different kind of film, but this one there, there isn't as far as I could tell. And I did a bunch of research on it just to double check that there wasn't anything new I wasn't aware of. Um, so this is very much like a display piece, but it yeah. is very cool looking. So it is a fun thing to like keep on your shelf. I think it's heavy enough to use as like a bookend, which is probably what I'll end up oh, doing. That's a fun idea. Yeah. But um, if you want it and we're, like, if you find one and you're thinking maybe you'll resell it, it's probably worth like 10 bucks. So yeah, I have, I actually have a lot yeah. of two of them and I, I have them listed on Depop and they're just not going. I yeah. might end up keeping them and putting them on. So that's shelf. what I was thinking at first was like, well, maybe I'll lot it up, but I don't even think I have anything right now to lot it with. And if I did find something, I don't know if I'd pay like a cheap enough price to make the lot worth it to put together. Okay, yeah, so, um, you know, I think if I didn't keep it, I'd sadly probably redonate this and just know that someone would probably yeah. have fun finding it. But um, even on Depop, I don't think it's really going I to I would move, think so. on eBay, maybe somebody would buy it like a prop house, but there's probably so many it's of them. So it's so common. It is That's not hard to find that. Yeah. 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 This was one of the first like really affordable instant cameras. So they were very, very mass produced and yeah. they're really hardy. Like if you feel it, the plastic is really yep. sturdy. Yep. So it's not like they're falling apart and any of the ones that were made when they first came out don't exist anymore. You know, they're still sticking yeah. around people's basements and attics. So, um, that's the story of this camera. And I keep wanting to do a camera show. So we should do that at some point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all you. But that would be great. Yeah. And, or if someone is watching and knows more, I'm sure there are people who know much more than I do. Um, it would be fun to have a guest on for that or I could do it myself. But. Yeah, yeah. That's. Yeah. So yeah, Brian, say so good for a prop. Yeah, it's a, it would be a good prop. But again, like it's not hard to find yeah. them. So you're yeah. probably not going to have the one that people are looking for. Right. Unlike other items where it's like new and packaged, like they, they, you know, there's just so few of those left. It's kind of the situation for these. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And then next week we are doing, so <clears throat> I know. I think it was it was Elisa who reached out to me and a couple mm -hmm. other people were asking. So last week I touched on grand millennial style and I know I didn't explain it very well because it was just one of our items. But we decided that it's probably better to do a kind of a deep dive show. Mm -hmm. into it. it is something that's really trending. A lot of you don't understand or know what it is. I hadn't heard of it either before Lola introduced me to it. And <clears throat> it is something that you you know, it is trending like with keywords on eBay right now. And it's something that you should be familiar with as mm -hmm. a reseller. So we are and going to be talking very about similar to cottage core. It's an aesthetic where a lot of the things that we're already selling and finding in thrift stores are falling under this category. So it may not even be a thing where you have to adjust what you're looking for. It may yeah. be more thinking about how to brand your items in a different way and reaching the right buyers with the right keywords. Exactly. And that's going to be next Wednesday, not Friday. Lola has something on Friday. So yeah. we have uh, rescheduled it for Wednesday, the third, same time, 1 p.m. Eastern, mm -hmm. 10 a.m. Pacific. Yeah. But so hopefully if some people are busy on Friday, maybe you're available Wednesday afternoon yeah. and we'll see you in the chat. For sure. Yeah. All right. And we're going to get maybe into jump in. Yeah, I'm ready. Any seller tips. So like I said at the top of the show, these are sort of tips that we have um, come up with based on our own experiences. And a lot of them do come from real life situations that were not the most positive, but I think both of us are really committed to always having sort of an optimistic outlook on what we do and we do it because we love it. So um, I feel like once we started putting our notes together, there really was like, this sounds cheesy, but like there was a good positive lesson to take away from like every frustrating yeah. experience we had. Yeah. 
So. And I'm not going to hold back. Like, I am going to show yeah. you a couple. Like I have a couple of examples and I think Lola has one too. That were, were some bad apples, mm -hmm. you know, they were legit bad apples. And, but we'll show you how we dealt with them yeah. and, uh, and how, you know, how a lot of times too, the bad apples don't, I don't want to say win, but and they, they don't get you down don't characterize the vast majority of our experiences. I think on social media, it's so easy to feel like that's really common because that's when people have the motivation yeah. to vent yeah. about it, to talk about it. It's a story to tell. It's not as exciting of a story when you have a perfect transaction where nothing goes wrong. The buyer pays immediately. You ship it out. You get good feedback and you're done. You know? Yeah. People don't post about their thousand yeah. positive feedback. Right. They post about the one negative. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so our first tip is to know how to handle a situation according to each selling platform. Yeah. Okay. Now you can take this one away because I know this yeah, is so, mostly okay, yours. So I'm going to show an example. So my example has, let me talk through it first, but um, okay. So first of all, so know how, so you have to know, so how to contact your buyer, what each platform's policies and expectations are. And if you sell on multiple platforms, remember to be flexible in your policies from platform to platform. To platform. So no, like, for example, in Poshmark, there's no true way to message. It's all comments on a bundle or comments on an item. And remember that those comments, even on the bundles, are searchable and public for everyone to see. So you don't want to have anything said that, you know, even in eBay, though, in the messenger and the messages that could come back to bite you, too, because the eBay employees can see the messages. So don't ever say anything that you don't want everyone to see. But remember that in uh, when you're making the comments on the item, you might not want to put like information about certain offers that you gave people and all because it is something that everyone can see. <laughs> So, um, so I had, so for example, here's one, I had issues with a USPS package being lost. Um, so I had talked about how we had a flood here in early September. One of our main USPS hubs was shuttered completely roof damaged. The building was condemned. And so all the mail was rerouted. It's still affecting me with late packages, but, uh, I had four packages go missing. One of those packages was from Poshmark. And three were from eBay. I'm going to talk about the differences between handling customer service and a lost package on eBay versus Poshmark. So Poshmark has a policy that they will refund both the buyer and the seller if a package goes missing at the hands of USPS as long as you shipped using Poshmark's label system, which you have to which do. Have, yeah, there's different. not really an option to around. Do it. Yeah. So the best thing to do is to comment on the item. And let the buyer know that you see the tracking hasn't updated and to give it a little bit of time, but let them know that you're on top of it. So versus eBay or Etsy or Depop, where you have DMs as a standard feature, you're going to you're gonna have to comment on the item and let the buyer know. So here's what mm -hmm. I did with this. I told her first, so sorry, this package is apparently taking this, the USPS scenic route, watching the traffic, tracking, sorry, it's moving so slowly. So she was really nice. She said, it's okay. You've shipped and done your part. It will take a, a while, but I'll get them eventually. Thanks for following up with me. And I said, you know, thanks for understanding. We've had a, a slowdown of several packages coming out of my area lately. So frustrating. Um, and then I told her that I was opening up a, a USPS case, which I think is a good standard thing to do anyway, because I know pa Poshmark covers it. At this point, I didn't know Poshmark was going to cover it, by the way. But it's a good thing to do because, um, you know, if, if USPS reimburses, you know, that's... And it's a way to demonstrate very specifically that you're in your buyer's corner. Like you're going to bat for them. You're caring about the transaction. You're not just letting it up to, go up to chance. Right. And so. sometimes opening a case will actually sh shake the item, the package loose because it'll mm -hmm. get their attention. It didn't in this case, but sometimes it does. So, so she says, thanks. We will see how it goes. I'm in no rush. And notice the buyer is very friendly. And I had reached out, you know, and so I did. I said I did open a USPS case, but it takes forever than review. Um, and then I reached out to Poshmark customer service as well. Um, I know ultimately we probably have to wait a bit longer. Thanks for being so patient. It's frustrating to see the package not budging at all. So I let her know. You know, I'm frustrated too. And so she said it's honestly not an issue. Worst case scenario, I'm out forty dollars, which would have never happened in you know anyway. But but it's absolutely not on you. You've done everything you were supposed to do. I'm just very grateful for your continued help. You're a great posher. So that is so nice. So uh, so then what happened is the next thing Poshmark ruled that they refund. They said that it was in fact lost. It takes about forty eight hours to hear back from Poshmark customer service. There is no calling them. There is only messaging them. That's it. Period. Mm -hmm. So. 
um, you have to, so you have to kind of open a case and message them and then wait like two days. So it'll come into your email. And so, it, so they messaged me and said that they refunded both due to the package missing. So, and then she was really happy. She was, you know, she was really, really happy. So she said, um, you've been amazing from start to finish. Thank you for everything. And I said, you're so welcome. Thank you for being so great. I, and I still hope they, they turn up because they were awesome boots. Mm -hmm. So here's Poshmark's reply. They said, um, <laughs> Thanks for the follow-up. We apologize for any frustration. Under our Posh Protect policy, we have released your funds for this order while also providing the buyer with a refund due to USPS tracking issues. So please let us know if you do end up receiving the package as it is helpful for us to learn more about these types of shipping, please. So there's a, there's a good thing to know. If you have this happen on Poshmark, that's how to handle it. Now, yeah. with and, eBay. Oh, can I just add a really like quick note to this? Um, I mean, a great thing, too, is that the buyer could luck out and get the item for free. So good for mm -hmm. her if that does happen. But you're still made whole. And any future buyers from your closet, if they're looking at your past transactions to see what kind of seller you are, this is the interaction that they're going to see because all of these comments are public. Exactly. So so now with eBay, it's a little different. So with eBay, you do have to they, they don't cover you like that. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. So. But I do let them know that I'm on it, that I'm watching. So I said, um, so I messaged her and said, this was some, one of the items that went missing. I said, if no update on the case by Monday, I'm going to refund, because I did open up, I'd already messaged her that I opened up the USPS case. I said, I'm going to refund you on Monday. If it shows up after that, you can just keep it. I don't want you to keep you in limbo. Uh, one of the other packages that went missing. So one of my packages, not one of the three, but another one did show up. So that's why I'm giving until Monday. So um, but if not, I will give you a few, full refund. I'm so sorry about this. Hope you enjoy your weekend. So the best thing to do. So I ended up having to refund her in full. That's just how it is. eBay expects that. Mm -hmm. And they will close. The, if you don't refund them, they will um, close. If a case is open, they will close the case in against you and it will count as a defect. So you have to refund and they will take the money out of your funds. Like they'll just take it from you. So, um, so unfortunately, I was denied the case from EPS, uh, USPS. They are denying claims right now, left and right. So I expect um, uh, I expect denials on all of them. Got my first one. I did um, provide them with um, all kinds of um, verification and everything, and uh, they still um, didn't much matter. They so. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. Hopefully, we will. Um, Hopefully we'll get, you know, we'll get a better decision on that, but I just don't know. So, yeah, that's really frustrating. And I, I think to feel it. So I have to good, feel it now. A good takeaway here is we always talk about cross-listing our items. We're both really big on that, especially between eBay and Poshmark. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're a new seller and you don't have deep funds to cover some of these things that are just kind of cost of business issues, mm -hmm. um, Nay could not control that she lived in a place that normally doesn't get huge flooding, but this year had hurricanes and tornadoes. Um, so, you know, if, if nay, if you were starting out now, I mean, I might advise you to stay on Poshmark just to avoid that situation where yeah. eBay is not going to reimburse you. Um, but that's sort of a decision where, you know, depending on everybody's individual situation, you can choose yeah. your platforms sort of based on some of these policies as well. Yeah. Um, but the thing is too, with eBay, like, my buyer is made whole. I'm not, but my buyer right. has her money back. She's done. She she's taken care of. She's out of the picture. I will fight this out with USPS on my own terms. I didn't involve the buyer in that. I know that I was I had posted this on on the thrifting board and somebody said, "Oh, well, I make my buyer file a claim with the USPS." Don't that's do that. Not, that's Don't not do how that. It's not that's done. against policy and it will get you a very upset customer. So just make them whole and then deal with it on your own. And if you don't get reimbursed, it's life. You know, it's part yeah, of and business. We did have a question in the chat from Adele. Um, where are we finding our awesome finds? Nay, where did that amazing pair of boots come from? I think you mentioned it. Oh, in the previous those episode. were from, gosh, those were from, I think my my Goodwill in Philly, like a few years back. And I, I just ended up getting them listed like rather recently. They're like vintage. They were like vintage Y2K-ish um, Steve Madden boots. And they were so cool. And they're lost, they're which, cool. which makes it's me so sad. Me, which is the sad part because they yeah. were such awesome boots. I mean, everybody got reimbursed, but, right. so but Brian, hopefully they're not destroyed in a flood or something because they're know, just so great. So Brian, I did get the extra 10 days and um, they wouldn't, they don't extend past that. So.
So mm. I did get that extra 10 days. That and, is a good tip. and But I did have to refund at the end of that. And one of them, actually, I didn't make it. Like, I think I thought I had till the last day and I went to refund and eBay had already closed out the case, sucked my money out and gave me a defect. So make sure, and I can't do anything about it. So make sure that I, I did try. So make sure that you are on top of that and that you refund before the last day. And only if you're a top rated seller that they'll give you the money back if the package arrives. So that's frustrating. Mm-hmm. But and that's only within 30 days as well. Mm. So, and, um, and Angelique has a good point. You will have a mad buyer if you make them do your work. It's definitely exactly. part of our job. Yeah. yeah somebody actually, um, if you search my thread in the thrifting board, it's in there. I had posted about the, the denial because I want to know if anyone had gone through it, you know, recently mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. documentation they need. Because I gave them the sales record and everything. I didn't know what do they need to prove the, the, the cost of the item. Uh, so, but somebody actually put, you know, like, oh, I make my buyers open up the case. That's on that. I tell them that's their responsibility. Do not do that. That is bad yeah. customer service. Um, so we'll talk more about returns in a bit, but know that if you do sell on eBay, you basically must take returns for any reason, even if you sell and have a no return policy. So eBay can force the return. So it's best customer service to just accept returns on eBay. Um, but on Poshmark and Depop, there's no such policy. And on Mercari, like Poshmark, the buyer has three days to accept or refuse the item. Um, know your platform's policies before you start selling on a new platform so you know how to best respond to customer service issues. Telling someone, sorry, you don't take returns on eBay is more likely to get you an angry buyer on eBay. But if you uh, if you say the same thing on Poshmark nicely, you can back it up saying, sorry, sorry, as per Poshmark policy, returns for fit or taste are not allowed. So that's okay on that platform, but it doesn't mm-hmm. fly anyway. Uh, and buyers can case open a case on the item if it's not what was promised, like an INAD on eBay. So there is that. But as far as like just I have buyer's remorse or it doesn't fit, you can't you can't do that for returns. And know, know what buyers expect from each platform. So buyers on Depop in general tend to be younger and super chill and laid back. So your messages, while they should still be professional, can give off a more relaxed kind of younger vibe and keep messages short and friendly. Depot buyers don't like to get into long conversations as a general rule because they're young Mm -hmm. and they just, you know, brief messages. Um, Buyers on eBay tend to expect far more as customer service and ability to return and fast shipping speed. The audience is used to fast shipping like Amazon and will expect a similar service. But Poshmark allows even the Posh ambassadors three days to ship and that's the norm. So Posh buyers aren't usually expecting lightning fast shipping and handling times Mm -hmm. and again these are generalizations there are always some buyers who will differ on all platforms so Mm -hmm. yeah and like i i I think i might have it in our notes for later but like i had one buyer (laughs) on poshmark who was like livid i hadn't shipped within 12 hours and like the post office hadn't even opened between when she made her purchase and when she started getting mad about it so it's like there's definitely some people who are used to the Amazon super fast prime shipping. And then there's some people who are super laid back and chill. And you just kind of, if you have a buyer who's contacting you, like do your best to kind of gauge their, their attitude, like as much as you can through text and respond accordingly. And, you know, and just try to respond to your buyers where they're at and keep that in mind. If you're selling across multiple platforms to be flexible and to adjust based on who you're talking to and where. Yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah, I don't sell on Amazon. I don't. I, we don't. For the same reason. Amazon. Yeah, I have a few books listed on Amazon, but it's like very, very <laughs> few and far in between. Yeah. Um, so that sums up that one, I think. So yeah. this next one is be um, proactive. So um, you want me to take this one, day? We can kind of. Yeah, sure. I have some examples, but you can go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So um, this already already came up with Nay's first example with the boots, like. The best thing you can do if you think that there's going to be an issue is to contact your buyer before they have a chance to contact you. So reach out, reassure them that you're aware of the issue. And so if they're starting to get anxious, they don't have to pull out their pitchforks. They don't have to contact you angrily because you're already setting the tone. You're being very thoughtful, very aware of the situation. Um, If you know for some reason that you're going to be delayed in shipping, Don't hope that they don't care, you know, give them a message, explain what's going on. People are usually understanding, especially if you have a good reason. Um, So a a good example of this was um, I had a uh, one one instance where I was going out of town and I thought I would put all of my my posh closet eBay store on 
like vacation mode once I was in the car on their way to our destination. And like literally as I was going out the door, someone purchased something on Poshmark and I did not have a chance to grab it and package it and ship it. So I immediately messaged her and said, um, you explain the situation, apologize profusely. Like literally five minutes later, I was going to put my store on vacation. She was fine with it. And then I ended up kind of throwing an extra item into her package, which um, was actually a tip that <laughs> will come up again later. But, um, and just that cute open communication could have, it could have been a huge issue. It could have been negative feedback and it was totally fine. Um, and then I know you had another, another situation where, um, if you noticed a flaw before you shipped. And so, you yeah, so this is the connected. one that I have. Uh, oh, let me here. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> so this is um, here. Okay. So this is the one. So, so <clears throat> I, well, this is one example and this has happened a few times to me over the years, you know, it, it happens. So I grabbed a dress that was new with tags out of my bin in storage. And when I got it home, it was no longer new with tags. The tag was gone. I must have snagged it on something. I went back, retraced my steps. I thought if I could still give her the tag, you know, and just, I couldn't find the darn tag. And I know like when I took the pictures of the item, it was new with tags. I had, no one had worn it. No one had. So I told her, I said, I let her know. I just, I said, hi, as I, I noticed I was packing it up to ship. I must have somehow snagged and pulled the tag off between retrieving from storage and home, retraced steps, looked in bin, and I can't find the tag. It absolutely was new with tags. It's advertised, though, and it is now not new. Um, it is now new and unworn without the tag. Sorry. Um, is this still okay to send? Wanted to let you know before it ships tomorrow morning. And she said, yes, as long as it isn't new. And I said, okay, yes, promise it was brand new with tags. As advertised, never worn, but I seem to be a disaster this week. It was just one of those weeks. And somehow managed to pull off the tag. I will be shipping out to you in the morning. Thank you. Have a good night. So sorry. And she messaged me back. I hope your week gets better with a smiley face. So it yeah. was just like a nice interaction. Now, had I not mm -hmm. done that and I just sent her an item that didn't have the tag when she was expecting a new a tags item, I could have gotten an INAD and an angry buyer. You know, it would have. Right. So this and this is the feedback I got. Um, friendly seller, good communication for that dress. So, yeah. so that was the good communication that got you yeah. that feedback. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I had another uh, situation that was similar and unfortunately ended up with me losing the sale, but I had a beautiful white dress. Nay, you were with me when I found it and I had decided to professionally get it dry cleaned because it was so nice and they would add to the selling price and I sold it for like $80, $80 I think. I probably paid like six or seven plus the cost of dry cleaning. And when I went to pull it out from the closet, it had all of these yellow stains that I think had been like raised over the summer yeah. when it was stored in, in the heat because it was on the third floor of my house and heat rises and it gets hot up there. Um, and it was just so like I saw it and just like my heart broke, you know, I knew that because it had already been cleaned, like these stains are probably set in they were not going to come out. So I messaged the buyer, explained the situation. Um, told her, you know, I'm happy to do whatever you want. I'll give you a deep partial discounts in it anyway, cancel the sale. Yeah. And so she did cancel the sale and I lost the sale, but I mean, so much better that I noticed it and be proactive then than send it to the buyer, let her find the stains on her own. And then she would yeah. have been so right to give me negative feedback. So. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So, so this and that was, one stands out in my memory because it was so heartbreaking. That's a shame. Yeah, but I mean, it's better to lose the sale. Yeah, and you know what? I actually really regret. I think I redonated that dress. Now I have a little bit more experience like over dyeing stuff. It was a white dress. I could have totally dyed it like yeah. blue or green or red, anything. And I didn't, but lesson learned. Um. So this was one that I did. My mom had an issue um, where she needed to she needed to go to the hospital. She's fine. But, um, so I did have an emergency that day and I couldn't chip and this was on Depop and I just gave them a heads up that it was going to be a little late. I said, thanks to your purchase. I had a family emergency and the item is in storage. So apologies for the delay in shipping. I will be able to retrieve it tomorrow. We'll get it out to you as soon as possible. No problem. Sounds good. And thank you. Thank you for, and I said, thank you so much for your patience and understanding. So if you're gonna, if you have an issue, things, people know you're human, things happen, reach out to your buyer and let them know it's going to be late. And you don't have to give them like an exact reason, a family emergency. I didn't say mm -hmm. my mom's, you know, I didn't go on about, I just, that was enough, yeah. you know? Um, so this one is another one that, um, 
I was, uh, this was one of them that, that, um, was missing that did show up during that flood time. So I did tell her, I said, um, I kept her, I kept her updated the whole way. I had, when I noticed that it was missing, I said, you know, I noticed your package is slow. And I said, I just, I did send your item, but I see no tracking yet due to the USPS hub in my area being condemned. Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I said, um, uh, anything going out of New Jersey has been held for a week or more. In some cases, I don't see any, if I don't see movement by Monday, I will open a case and I will refund in the case. Uh, I will refund in the case that is truly missing, but hopefully it should show up. Thanks for your pacing patience. I'll update you on Monday. And then I saw that the tracking started moving again. So I, mm -hmm. I said, and it ended up in Mississippi and she was like somewhere completely <laughs> elsewhere. So it went from yeah. New Jersey to, yeah. So um, I said, your package finally showed up on the grid in Mississippi. No idea how or why since I'm in New Jersey, but at least it's finally moving. I think she was like in New York too. So it was, Oh my God. So it really was supposed crazy. to go to Mississippi. Yeah. I mean, who knows what the post office had to do logistically during that situation. So exactly. So it ended up like in some crazy other state, but it did end up finally getting there. But I, mm -hmm. I kept her updated the whole way and no case was open. So that saved me from getting a case open. It probably saved her from having a headache and not knowing where her package mm -hmm. was. So yeah. yeah. We have some comments in the chat, I see. Yeah, so Heather had a similar situation with the plate. I mean, definitely better to notice that before you ship than to let it get to your buyer and then have them be upset. Yeah. Um, so, yep. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. They're using other sort centers when there is emergency. Yeah. Um, and then Jess, actually, this is another um, tip that we're going to get to yeah. in a little bit, is that sometimes you do have new buyers, and the best thing you can do is to... Um, to be patient and to help them learn the platform so that they can become repeat buyers. Yeah. Um, our next one is our next tip is yeah. Keep calm, be professional. Don't let emotions take over with difficult buyers or situations. So reply to open cases with facts, not emotion. Often the, the facts speak for themselves. And that's a really important point. So <clears throat> the eBay, Poshmark, Depop, whatever employee that's looking at the case will take more kindly to the level headed seller who is responding calmly with facts over the buyer who's calling the seller names or making claims that can be disputed with clear facts or vice versa. If you're the one name calling, they're probably going to side with the buyer, you know. Um, remember that all messages can be seen by employees of the platform and all Poshmark comments are public, like we already said, and can be found even if they're in a bundle. So don't say anything that will turn off employees or um, get you in trouble or you could even get booted on the platform if, you, if you're threatening somebody, you know, that's not a good thing to do. So, um, <clears throat> or they could turn off a future potential buyer because people will search, you know, if they don't to make sure they, they should have confidence in mm -hmm. purchasing from you. Um, in the case of a negative feedback on eBay, if you can't get the feedback removed, reply to it calmly and professionally. Usually wait a couple days so that your emotions have calmed down. And just to reply with the facts, attacking the buyer or sounding confrontational will only damage your reputation for future buyers because they are going to look at those negatives and they're going to see how you responded. And if you respond with clear facts and most of your uh, feedback is positive, they're so probably still going to buy from you. And uh, so remember that negatives do fall off after a year and one or two aren't going to break your selling career. So, uh, but responding aggressively could, that, that could hurt you. Uh, sometimes you can turn a difficult buyer into a friendly one or repeat customer. Sometimes a tough buyer has been burned by another seller on the platform and can turn their, you can turn their idea of the platform into a positive one. So you can turn them around and maybe you have a repeat customer. I do have a couple things to show here. So this, um, Okay, so this I sold this this coach bag, and this is one that I did have a difficult. She was actually bad oh, apple. Yes. So I and I'm going to talk about her and how I handled her. So this coach bag had some. It was from the bins. Um, I sold it for thirty. My profits. Uh, I did give a shipping discount. My profits, I think, were twenty two or twenty four dollars with the shipping with with posh fees and the discount. So, uh, so that was all I was making on this bag. So and that's. That'll become important. Which is great for a bins item, but not so yeah. great when you then get frustrated it, with dealing with the situation. Yeah, and it did have some some marks and stains. I probably could have cleaned it up a little more, but you know, I just wanted to to um some of them were like a little bit like they weren't coming off, like there was some some wear and stuff that was but I, I noted everything. I said some service spots and wear overall very good pre owned condition, which was the truth. There were no holes in it or anything. Um, you know, it just needed some TLC. So, um, and I said a fanny pack and hip bag. So, okay. So those are com comments. So 
she opened up a case, a return request, um, and it said um, the item reported item is broken, damaged, stained. Now, if you describe your item accurately, if you say there's a big stain in the middle of the shirt and you sell it that way and the buyer buys it and you can prove that you said there's a big stain in the middle of the shirt, Poshmark will sign with you usually. So anyway, I, she said, I buy from Poshmark daily. This item was dirty, stained, and not at all as described. I'm sorry, but I'm very disappointed, especially for the price I paid. So first of all, it was not completely dirty and stained. It had a couple spots on it. I very, very clearly described and showed the pictures. She sends pictures that were kind of, you know, like not really clear and basically what I already showed anyway. So the pictures didn't help. She said, and the, so Poshmark responded, we're reviewing the case. You're welcome to provide feedback. And I said, hi, so sorry you're disappointed. You always say that in the case, you know, address the buyer like they're a human. But I did list as pre-owned and added the, to the description that there are surface spots and wear and took clear photos, which was facts. I responded mm -hmm. with facts. So the next thing that happened is now she gets, now she starts calling me a scammer. So this is where it gets. So she said, apparently your description is in used and mine are different for $40 or, or more which it was 30. I, again, I gave her a shipping discount. I think I made 22 or $24. So don't know where she got 40 or more. This item isn't worth the money. I guess I got scammed. The descriptions, and then she went to this to try to get uh, out of out of it, maybe realizing that she wasn't going to get out of it, the, get the return with the, the stain claim. The description says hip, hip bag. I was looking for a fanny pack. This was, wasn't at, described at all, but to misguide someone. Again, if you look at my title, I said fanny pack, hip bag, which is, they're synonymous. So um, anyway, so I did say this because I did think that she should be called out for this. So I did say, I don't appreciate being called a scammer. I am a Poshmark ambassador and do my absolute best to describe and photo items accurately. Again, so sorry for your disappointment, but in no way do I try to scam any anyone. I do this as a job that I care about in order to provide for my family Usually you don't get personal, but in this case, she called me a scammer and I wanted Poshmark to know, I think I, you know, after that, I didn't say much more. So I did say photos were provided, described as accurately as possible. Measurements were also provided so it'd be easier to figure out size of the bag. Guess what happened? After reviewing the buyer's case, we have decided to deny the return. Your earnings have been released. Thanks for your patience. Bam. So um, that, you know, I did, I provided facts, clear and when I looked up her as a buyer, um, her her comments on other, she has done this to a lot of other sellers where she, um, it seems like she does buy a lot and she she has buyer's remorse and this is what she does to get returns. Uh, she did a lot of lowballing, a lot of uh, claims to people that they didn't send the right item when they did, um, mm -hmm. when they probably did, you know, I so she, it, it seems like they also look at the track record of buyers. So just yeah. don't get upset. I didn't get upset about the case. Worse come to work comes to worse. I would have lost twenty four dollars, but I addressed it and I won. So, and here th these are the two negatives that I've ever gotten in my life. Knock on wood. I probably just jinxed myself, but yeah. So this one was a few years back. It's gone now. I have one hundred percent positive feedback. Again, knock on wood. So I was actually legitimately very very ill. Um, I had sold this audiobook, could not find it. I was like deathly ill. I forget I had like bronchitis or something. I had to go to storage. I was digging through storage looking and I told the buyer, I reached out and said, look, I'm really sick. I look for it. I'll look again tomorrow. I just couldn't find it. If I can't find it, I'll refund you or I'll. So <clears throat> what I did was I ended up, I couldn't find it, ended up buying it from another seller. I, um, I've shipped it and the USPS um, was delayed that package like and it didn't get there on time for I think it was a holiday gift. And uh, so she ended up getting um, getting the item and I re and, I, and, and a refund. So I just stated the facts, mm -hmm. nothing I could do. Um, and then the same thing with this one. Um, I she did not send me. I mean, every every single message that she sent me, I did. Um, I did reply to. So I, I never knew what she was talking about there. And I did refund her too. So I did everything right in that case. So I just stated the facts and that was mm -hmm. all I could do. So yeah. And this is just a good reminder too, that like you've had two instances of this. If you're a good seller, if you do everything right for the most part, you're never going to be able to please everybody. But the few times that you do get negative are going to be very few and far in between. And you're going to probably have a good response for it. So yeah. 
I, I've been selling since 2011. So I've had two negatives in 10 years. Of course, yeah. again, I'm jinxing myself. One is coming. I know it. But but yeah, um, I mean, really. And it, and they did not break me. They're gone. Nobody sees yeah. them now. I had to go like searching like through. They just were like on page 20 of my feedback. So, you know. Uh, yeah. So that was. Uh, so, yeah, that's our our next our next. Our, I think that's all for that one. Should probably start going a little faster. I think our, our later ones will can refer back to some of the things we've already yeah. said. Yeah. So we can skip ahead a little bit. But okay. um so Nay, this is actually I think something I learned from you early on when I was starting to get more serious about selling. If you have a lost or damaged item, sometimes it's worth trying to replace the item and having it sent directly to the buyer. So um Sometimes with an error, an error, you can also kind of add in a little bonus, which is what I did in that situation mm -hmm. where I was late in shipping the item because I was on vacation. It was a lot of Ipsy bags. I think I may have actually told the story on an, a previous episode. Um, but in the interim, when I was gone, I actually got my most recent Ipsy purchase of like the current month's bag that month. Um, it was waiting for me when I got home. So I took out the makeup and I added the newest bag into the lot and just told her, you know, thank you so much for your patience. Enjoy the extra bag. And she was thrilled. So I was able to do, you know, like a little extra for her and it worked out really well. Um, and Nay, I know you've done this before when in, in your in your feedback, you mentioned it, even trying to find a replacement um, in that negative. Yeah. That you had. Yeah. yeah. So um, the, there's yeah, I have really quick a couple here. So this one was, I got this great feedback from, from her. So I, one of the pairs, this was one like that goes back to our other tips. One of the pair, it was just a lot of two shorts. I went to take out the shorts. One of them like had a hole in it. I don't know how the heck I missed it, but I just said, look, I'm really sorry. You know what? I sent her both pair. I refunded her and just sent her the both pair. So that's another thing you can do is just refund them and send what you can. And mm -hmm. I sent her the one with holes and the other one and just, you know, if Which she wants to pick it, she do. can. If she wants to donate it, she can. That was overly generous. I didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. I could just refunded her. I could have just sent her the one and made her pay for it. But you know what? I look at the feedback I got. So, and it was like a really low cost. I think the lot was like ten bucks. So I just gave her back her money and sent it and sent sent it anyway. Yeah. And then this one was um, so I had a, a hat. One of the items that was lost in the flood. Um, that I have the case open for, I was able to replace. So I did actually, um, I bought it up from another seller, found the same hat. Actually, it was a little less. So if I had refunded the, the buyer, I would have um, lost out. And um, I would have, I would have actually lost like 10 bucks. So it was actually cheaper this way to buy it from the other seller and have it shipped directly and look at the feedback I got left. So yeah. And, and that positive feedback is also worth something. It's worth something yeah. in terms of your future um, purchases from your store in the future. So, so here's what you do. If you're selling, if you're buying it from another eBay seller. Now I know, I know Jason has said, if you're, if you're selling it on eBay, if you're buying like a CD, you buy it on another platform. If you can find it on another platform, you can use that tracking number and replace your tracking number so that you can't do that if you buy it on the same platform. So if you're buying it on eBay, you can't, you can't do that. So that, that tracking number is already an eBay system. Yeah. So you still might get a ding, but oh, well, you know, mm -hmm. so what I did was I would, if I buy it from another eBay seller, you change the address to the seller, to the, to the buyer's address, mm -hmm. change it right away. And then make sure that you don't keep that in your thing so that your next item doesn't go there. Um, and then you reach out to the seller that you're buying it for saying, hi, this is a replacement item. I'm having you ship it directly to the buyer. Can you please not include a packing slip or anything with the item price on it? Because mm -hmm. you don't want, you know, I didn't want this guy to know that I bought it from another seller and I bought it for 10 bucks less. Yeah. So, and, and also I would, you know, communicate that and explain the situation. Cause I think um, most buyers, I mean, most sellers, like I would assume it's a drop shipper and I would be kind of annoyed by it. I would do it, but I'd be annoyed by it. So if you explain that you're just trying to do, you know, the best you can for your buyer, I think yeah. people will be more amenable to it. Yeah. I'll usually say it's a replacement item for yeah. an item that got lost yeah. or damaged from. Yeah. So, yep. So good thing to, to do. And uh, <laughs> sometimes the buyer doesn't even have to know, like it saves mm -hmm. you, and, you know. Yeah. Okay. So the next one is. So you've already said this in a couple different ways, but I think it's good to reiterate um, that most buyers are good and don't let a few bad apples ruin your outlook on all buyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, so, oh, yeah. I, this thing is actually your item. If you want to, if you want to do this one, 
Oh, it doesn't matter. I started talking. Okay. Um, so, you know, be friendly, keep a positive and kind uh, tone to your messages and it can be very hard. Nay, I think you said earlier to kind of step away, take a few deep breaths um, and come back if you're frustrated because, you know, getting that perspective can really help to approach things the right way. Um, but, you know, just assume the best of people. I think that's a really good way to approach life in general. And it definitely can be hard on the internet when it does feel like people, it's easier to be rude and bully when you're not seeing someone face to face, but like, there's no reason to perpetuate that. So, you know, just keep, keep a positive outlook and know that those, you know, negative experiences are really going to be the outliers, even if they are the ones that tend to stick in your memory. And like, I definitely can say this for myself. Like I, as I've mentioned a couple of times in this episode already, the stories that I remember most are the ones that are the outliers because they were so emotionally charged. Like I was really upset yeah. about them or I felt really personally offended or like someone said something poor about me. Um, but that's like once or twice. And I have had so many more experiences where I connected with a buyer over a shared interest in the item, or they told me a really cool story about what they were doing or why they were purchasing it, you know, and those are the reasons why we do what we do, because it's so exciting to have that one special thing and get it into the right person's hands. Um, so yeah. Nay, I know you have a couple stories to share. Well, yeah, just really quick, the, the, nothing like big, but but just being friendly. So this buyer, she bought a bundle from me and she was really, really picky at first. Like, is this from a non-smoking home? Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me like, does the, the, it was a, one of them was a cowl neck uh, top. Does it lay flat? I mean, it's a cowl neck. How do you, and I could have just been like, you know, snip, but instead I, I took my time, answered all of her questions. Mm -hmm. She purchased a bundle from me. And then she left me glowing feedback and she left me this message too. She, on my, on my um, profile picture, this was the person that purchased the bundle from me. She said this nice compliment. And guess what, Lola? She ended up subscribing to our channel. Oh, fine. Well, she's watching. Hello. She's watching. Thank you for watching. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, but she wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like her being, and at first I could have just misinterpreted it as her being picky. No, maybe she has an allergy to smoke. Exactly. Maybe I was going to say that. Before. There maybe, are lots of reasons. Maybe she's had a cow neck sweater that's puffed up before and it's, you know, it hasn't late or it bothers her neck or something. Who knows? I was happy to answer her questions, you know? Yeah, I didn't yeah. think of it as like picky. I thought of it as, you know, like, okay, she has a lot of questions. That's fine. I'll answer. And she was happy. So well, then, and I noticed this a lot on like Poshmark, um, like Facebook groups and stuff. People will complain about all of these very specific questions, but we benefit from the fact that Poshmark doesn't take returns for taste yes. or fit, like we said earlier. So if you want to enjoy that benefit, you also have to, you know, take the flip side of it, which is you are going to have customers that are going to ask those questions, take the time to make sure they're buying what they really want. And that's good for us in the end, because if we answer those questions first, we are less likely to have an unhappy buyer at the end. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's also true. Exactly. And then you change their minds about the platform. They might be hesitant to buy in the future, yep. but once they've had a better experience, they might be more confident to come back again. And that benefits all of us as a community. And look at what she, the glowing feedback I ended That's up. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it was a positive experience and Lola, I think we got a new viewer because she was. That's awesome. she was, yeah. So she was, it ended up being a really friendly interaction. And had I just like not answered her questions or been like, oh, it's in the description or, um, you know, been, been snarky, that whole thing wouldn't have happened. And yeah. So, yeah. And our next tip is one that Jess had already brought up in the chat, but be patient and kind to new buyers. <clears throat> um, Nay, like you said, we've all started somewhere. We all had zero feedback at one point or another. And you have to, you know, remember that there was a time when all of this was a learning curve. Like I've been on Poshmark for a really long time. I was a pretty early user. I think I joined in like 2013 or 2014. And I remember the first few times I opened the app, I like didn't really get it. It took me a couple tries to like start enjoying scrolling through the feed and just kind of knowing how to browse items and finding things I liked and making my first purchase. And I did have one buyer that um, kind of stands out as like one of the times that like I really, really felt um, 
I don't know, like disappointed or hurt by the buyer was the one I mentioned at the top of the show where um, she started like complaining I hadn't shipped yet, even though the post office literally hadn't even opened. And she started saying that like I'd run off with her money. And I tried to explain to her that like Poshmark doesn't release funds to the seller until you get and accept your item, but she just did not understand. And as much as it hurt to be accused of that, even though like literally had nothing wrong, um, it was a good reminder that for some people, it's just a completely new experience. And the policies and the systems that we're used to as like our day-to-day kind of run-of-the-mill experience, this is how it works on Poshmark, yeah. so it works on eBay, can be totally new to some people. And if we can help walk people through that, then again, they're going to be a repeat buyer, they're going to have more confidence, and they're going to end up, if not purchasing from us, purchasing from someone who's quite a bit like us is another reseller who is also just trying to, you know, make a, a living by reselling stuff that we find secondhand. So, yeah. you know, it helps all of us together. Yeah. To a lot of people safe. too are only buyers. And if they're new mm-hmm. to a platform, you could turn them off to that platform forever. If you're their first, uh, if their first, first item they bought is from a seller that has, gives them a negative experience, they could be turned off from that platform forever. Exactly. Um, so, so I think <laughs> with offers, like I've had people a lot of people don't know that like on Poshmark, they take 20%. So like if somebody gives me, you know, a lowball offer, they don't know I'm going to walk away with $4, <laughs> you know, so especially if they're new. So, okay. So these shoes are, we're from, we're to a new buyer sold these quite a while ago. They are, they were really awesome shoes. Um, but look at the feedback I got. So she, per- this, she purchased them right away and look at what the feedback. So she, signed up for so she was a new posher she signed up for um she said she she loves them so much as she's been trying to get a backup pair for years i she was ecstatic to find them in her size she signed up for poshmark just to buy those shoes so Mm -hmm. you know that That is is such a great story and i think this is a good reminder too that as much as you were saying that each platform has its own vibe of buyer you're also going to have some buyers who are finding your items through google shopping who are um not actually loyal to the platform and Mm -hmm. so it's good to remember that some people are new some people might not be familiar with the norms and to to try and gauge that when you're communicating with your buyer and adjust accordingly definitely so this i showed a couple weeks ago i sold it for six paid right away it went actually to ohio state to the campus so it was obviously a student. So she had, and I didn't even, you know, I didn't even realize this until after I sold it and it was already shipped that she had zero feedback because I don't even pay attention to that anymore. Mm-hmm. So for some people, they're like, oh, I should cancel the sale. Um, and they they spend, you know, time like writing a, a big diatribe in a, in a group about, oh, I have a zero feedback buyer. What should I do? Sell to them. We all start somewhere. It's, you know, so she this was a zero feedback buyer. Guess what? Um, here's her feedback. She's got one feedback. Guess who her one feedback is from? <laughs> so, That's great. Yeah. So, um, and no problems. I, she didn't, she did not um, leave me any feedback, but she's a new seller, a new buyer. So I wouldn't expect it, but there have been no issues. And you can help get her started with yeah. her so, so she has the, and I'm, I love leaving somebody a new feedback. Mine are automated, but if it wasn't, I'd be like, Oh, I'm so excited. Welcome okay. to eBay. You know, I'd say, I'd say something personalized, mm-hmm. but I just don't have, I I do automated feedback. So yeah. So there are two experiences that were good with a new buyer. So our next one is, um, yeah, don't be bummed by returns and cancellations. So, um, yeah. So if a buyer asks to return something or cancel sale, just reply in a friendly manner. And of course you cancel or so sorry, you're disappointed. Of course, you'll take the return on eBay. You don't have to do that on Poshmark. Um, but um, know your platform's policy. You're no, you're no way obligated to take returns on platforms. Don't allow returns. Um, I saw that somebody was on, and one it was in a Poshmark group. Somebody was trying to circumvent Poshmark and asked and reached out, found the buy the seller's email somehow, and emailed them and said, "Hey, could you just send me PayPal me the the and and I'll ship it back, and you can just PayPal me the money." that's like a violation of Poshmark policy. Don't do that. Don't engage with, you know, you don't have, you don't have to bend over backwards and go off platform or something, you know, just, but um, it, it's another advantage of Poshmark since fee- funds are released when the buyer can no longer open a case and there you can't, re- you can't return for fit theoretically. Um, but if you're worried about dealing with returns, it might be better to, to start on Poshmark versus eBay or Depop because Depop doesn't allow returns either. Um, 
So um, Lola, you have a rule of thumb with fancy dresses, I know. Yeah. So I've said this before on the show, but my rule of thumb is that fancy dresses always sell twice. If you, I, I love buying them. I don't buy them as much as I used to because they are, they tend to be more expensive now in the thrifts than they used to be, but it's just so much fun to know that you're selling someone their prom dress or their wedding dress. And if you list it, I am, I just always know that the first buyer is probably going to return it. And for some reason, it's like been true for me, like at least like 85% of the time, the first buyer returns it, the second buyer keeps it. And just going into it that way, I don't get super excited about that first sale. I know that there's a really good chance it's not going to fit or it's just not going to be exactly what they want. And of course, this is mostly, this is on eBay. Like this isn't Poshmark where they can't return it. Um, but, and I just like, leave that money in my bank account and don't spend it and don't, you know, start reinvesting it in new, new stuff right away. Um, and wait till I get either um, communication from them that they love it or positive feedback or the return window has closed. And then I know that I'm in the clear. Um, and just having that mentality from the beginning, when the, when the first buyer does keep it in that rare instance, then I'm thrilled as opposed to being disappointed when I get the return. So yeah. it just helps. Yeah. I'll also often sell things that have a high return rate on uh, yeah. Poshmark, like a fancy dress, I will list it only on Poshmark and yeah. I won't even list it on eBay because, which is another option. But yeah, it's part of business. You have, to, especially if you're selling on eBay, it's just part of doing business and uh, mm -hmm. just don't, don't, don't invest a lot of time because yeah. here's a couple things like, so <clears throat> I kind of took a gamble on this. So this wallpaper I showed a couple weeks ago, I sold the mm -hmm. roll. Box. It was $18 ship, $18 return shipping. I actually had to pay an extra $36 for the return and the original shipping. So I was out $36 really because the roll didn't cost much, but you know what? I got it back. So she uh, said that there was water damage that I didn't notice. She was kind of fishing for a partial and she didn't include the photos that she said she included. So I was like, eh, I don't always like to just give partials. Um, I'll just say I take returns for any reason. That's fine. So I did. I said, I'm, I'm so I did not realize there was damage. I definitely tried to describe um, accurately without unrolling it in vintage condition being old. I didn't realize that. So anyway, since you can't use it, it's not a problem for you to send it back to me upon receiving the return. I'll issue your refund. No problem. So <clears throat> got it back. I haven't even opened it yet. It just came back. So, um, I did, I just refunded her already. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know, um, it, it's opened. I'm not going to be able to sell it for as much now. I'll still be able to sell it for something. Hopefully it's just minimal damage. Um, usually do open it and make sure inspect and all, but it's hard when it's in package. You can't do it. I knew either way it was going to be. So I just, I just refunded her. It happens. Yeah. So whatever I lost, I'm out really 36 bucks for the shipping mm -hmm. both ways. And that sucks, but you know what? I can probably sell it for at least that the second time around, even though it's technically not sealed anymore. Right. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the role. So happens. Uh, another instance, I sold this fabric the first time around, she was trying to match it to other vintage fabric. And when you're trying to match, match, there's different dye lots and all, it's kind of impossible. So storage she, will affect how much it's been faded, even if it's, yeah, you know, stored, yeah. if it's stored away from light, like the parts of it might still have been a little bit faded yeah. depending on where it yeah. was. Yeah. So I had sold it for 135 the first time around. Uh, she returned it. I was all bummed. Guess what? The second time around, I sold it for 225 and the sale stuck. So, you know, there's always that too. Yeah. And so every, I think that's a good example how every transaction you have may not end up positive. Like you may have to take the loss sometimes, but you're, it's going to even out because you're going to end up with some other situations where you make more money in the end, or it works out better in your favor. So it's just sort of like rolling with the punches. Um, and then I just showed you this uh, the other day. I, I was actually in the supermarket. I got a request to cancel. They purchased paid. And then she says, um, I apologize for my error, but I need to cancel this order, please. She had paid. So, you know, technically error, but whatever. You know what? Just, no. And m normally I wouldn't be so brief, brief, but I was literally in the middle of the supermarket. So I was just like, <laughs> okay, no problem. You and know? sometimes that brief response is fine when it's just, you know, you're getting it back to them really yeah. fast. The fast response could be better yeah. than the longer response. So cancel, sure refund, and moved on. You don't get mm -hmm. a ding if you say buyer asked to cancel and then you just relist. So no big deal. Moved on and, uh, Somebody else will hopefully give me a better offer for the boots. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next one is accommodate a buyer's shipping request whenever possible. 
Yeah. So um, this is a little bit of like, there are caveats to this, right? Because sometimes the buyer's requests are not things that we should do. For example, if someone wants you to undervalue the item when sending it abroad, that is illegal. Um, yeah, yeah, don't like it. Or sending that. Can you more gift on the custom form? Mm -hmm. Just say, I'm sorry, that's against the eBay policy or yeah. it's it's illegal, blah, blah, blah. And offer to cancel the sale. If you, you know, if you want to cancel mm -hmm. the sale, that's fine, but yeah. Um, but as we um, noticed in a lot of the items that we critiqued on our Critiquing Duds episodes, which um, if you haven't seen them, go back and watch because I think they have some great information. A trend between several people's items was that there was a very high shipping cost and it may not have been something that the seller was aware of if you're not looking at it from the buyer's perspective. But when we pulled up the item, it <coughs> seemed pretty you know, um, cost prohibitive. So if you have a buyer contacting you, asking you to work on the shipping cost to make it a little bit easier for them to afford the item, you know, definitely take that as not just a, um, a request from the buyer, but maybe a signal that that is something you should think about when you're um, kind of going over your items and aren't moving. Um, especially around the holidays, definitely, definitely um, offer expedited shipping, make sure that's already an option for the buyer to select. Um, so we both have some stories about this, Nay. You had your your sale. Yeah, well, um, I had one. So this, uh, what I have up on screen is something different, but I had one. So I sold a vintage Trapper Keeper to a prop company a few years back. Uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, can you FedEx this overnight to me? And I could have just said, no, I don't offer FedEx. And I could have just not done it. Guess what? I did it. And um, it got there the next day. They paid the extra, you know, ridiculous cost to FedEx it overnight, mm -hmm. left me glowing feedback and paid top dollar for the item. So, yeah. yeah. And um, oh, some great comments in the chat. Angie League says, sometimes it's because of um, past, you know, maybe yeah. poor packaging yeah. or something. Yeah. So if they have, they ask you to use extra bubble wrap, there's probably a reason. Just yeah. don't do anything illegal or harmful. It's a great, great rule of thumb. Yeah. And yeah, Brian has a great example. Um, express mail and paid for it, got there on time. Especially when you're selling a higher end item like that, $400 t-shirt. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely go the extra mile for your seller and for your buyer as a seller. Um, so I sort of had a similar situation with the shirt I'm wearing right now. Um, so I bought these two different shirts and I didn't know for sure I had tickets until the Friday before the game. And the game was on Tuesday. Um, I actually bought the tickets like right before we went on air. Um, and so I found these shirts. They were both shipped first class. So I messaged both buyers and asked if they would offer priority shipping and explain to them why, you know, I said, I, I, I'm a seller. I know that there's a chance USPS won't get it here in time. I want to take the risk. I will pay extra to have these ship priority. And I was kind of shocked that neither of them was like super calm. They sounded kind of like annoyed by it. And maybe I misread their tone, but like I would have been a little bit more like kind of upbeat and friendly, especially with knowing the connection, knowing the reason why I was willing to pay extra. Um, so this is just a good reminder that like, if you have any items that are time specific to make sure you have an expedited shipping option on them and time specific may be a broader category than you might think. So like anything that's good for a holiday gift, you know, or anything that's holiday related. But even if you have sports gear, like nay, you sold that sweatshirt, someone probably wanted that sweatshirt for game day because you're oh, sending yeah. it to Ohio state. So, you know, things like that, you definitely want to um, try and anticipate what the buyer's needs are and have those options available. Cause if I had been able to just check out and use priority shipping to begin with, I wouldn't have messaged the buyer. I would just bought them outright. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, um, and it's okay to decide what's a reasonable yeah, uh, based on your role. So yeah, I mean, if somebody asks you to ship a sweater immediate mail so that they can save some money, right. no, because that's yeah. also legal, you know, yeah. and, you know, but but use um use your own and sometimes like with GSP, I've stopped using it on all of my items. I used to do that because I would but mm -hmm. ship internationally, use the pirate ship, give your best rate. Mm -hmm. And but I mean on really expensive items, I think it's okay to use GSP because buyers are you know, you get that extra security and buyers mm -hmm. are probably not going to mind if they're buying a really expensive item. But if they ask you to take, can you sell it? Can you, can you do first class? Do it, you know, like there's mm -hmm. no reason that you can't. And um, so, 
I mean, I'll often give them a first class international option um, or do even eBay standard international gives you some security. You do have to file a claim after you don't get the money up front. You have to reimburse the buyer and then file a claim with that. So it's a little different, but there's still some, some security on it. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, there's I, work with your international buyers and def- definitely ship internationally. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this is one place where we have just a little bit of a different comfort level and that's a good example of kind of having to make that decision for yourself. So I had a bad experience where I did have a buyer request to, sh- to switch from GSP to non GSP and it just ended up being a huge mess. Um, and so I tend to stick to GSP. I do. Um, I am, probably at some point going to get comfortable shipping through pirate ship internationally, but at least for now, you know, it, it's not an experience I want to repeat. You so. can even do eBay standard international because you'll still mm-hmm. get, you have yeah. to reimburse and then uh, you'd have to refund and then get reimbursed to file a claim. So it's a little different, a little more of a hassle, but there's still you do have a little bit more security. Oh yeah. Right. And it's much yeah. less expensive. So it's more like, yeah, that is, that is an important, right. And I probably would make more international sales if I didn't just stick with yeah. GSP. So it's definitely, you know, as as we said, your comfort level. Uh, so this this guy uh, asked if I would um, ship to Italy, and I said absolutely, and then I gave him the information, and um, he um, he yeah he was happy. He bought it, and then um, he said, um, oh, when he got it, hi, the shirt just arrived, and it's really perfect. So I had a, a happy buyer. If I had just said no, I'm not shipping to Italy, or you know you know, it, I would have lost that sale in a happy buyer. So, and then, um, this, this person was, this is just a conversation that I had about, um, this pair of shoes that I sold. So she needed it like by the weekend. And it was when we were having all those flooding issues. Mm. So I told her, she was like, can you expedite it? Can you, and I, I was like, priority is probably not going to get there because of all of our flooding issues. She asked me to ex- expedite it. And I, it was like going to be 45, 70 to like, expedite it and she was like i don't want to do that just let's just chance it you know what she still gave me positive feedback and that's said great. that she was going to use them for another event so it didn't but at least i worked with her and i was and that, that's a kind of exactly the situation i was in where i was like i know i'm chancing it so like this shirt didn't arrive in time so i wasn't able to wear it but i'll wear it again in the future and those shoes are gorgeous i'm sure she'll have a great you know chance to wear them with some other outfits so exactly so our next to last one is um, so use mobile apps to your advantage and make sure notifications are turned on so you can give fast customer service on the fly. Kind of like I did with canceling that order on the fly, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, while I was in the supermarket, you know, grocery shopping. Um, so, uh, so here's one, you know, like she, and this is a deep pop, like this is the kind of dialogue that you get with buyers, you know, like you can tell they're young. That's the kind of response yeah. you get. The Yeah. So, um, but she was having trouble purchasing. I she did ask me to hold them. I don't hold things like that, you know. Like mm-hmm. I just if it's still there and you're interested, when you can pay for it, that's fine. But um, anyway, she had trouble purchasing. I tried to work her through it. She ended up um, she ended up buying, and she was happy. So yeah, and that's a good example too. That like if I got a request on Depop asking me to pay through Zelle, I'd be like, this sounds kind of like a scam. I think in that situation, it was just that she was trying to figure out how she to make it work. To figure, she yeah. ended up buying them and she, yeah, just mm-hmm. said, I can't take it off platform. I'm sorry. I can't do that. But that's a um, good, good example of trusting the buyer and trying to just kind mm-hmm. of yeah think the best okay. of people. So this guy was, I was on mobile and he was asking me like 50 bazillion questions about this shirt like and it was mostly stuff that was in the description all the measurements and I could have just said refer to the description but instead I was like no but I I, get, I was like out somewhere and I gave him all the information on the fly mm-hmm. he had a million he purchased the shirt and this is the feedback I got from having mobile answering his questions quickly and you know answering everything had I not had the mobile app when I was out, I wouldn't have been able to give him that level of customer service and I wouldn't have gotten this feedback. And that's the kind of amazing feedback that's so valuable because it's, you can tell it's responding to a very specific situation. You can tell it's genuine and that I would see that on someone's feedback and be like, Oh yeah, that's going to be a good buyer to buy Mm -hmm. from. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do not do that Mm -hmm. while you're driving. Yeah, definitely not. (laughs) So yeah. But that, that's one thing I, I actually kind of had in, in my notes was that um, as someone who doesn't drive, like when I was commuting and I would take public transit, that's so much time that you can use 
to respond to your buyers or yeah. share your Poshmark closet or, you know, whatever kind of admin you need to do on the fly, you have yeah. that downtime to make sure that you're checking in and making, mm -hmm. making sure you're on top of everything. Make sure that your notifications, like I said, reiterating mm -hmm. that are turned on because you don't want to miss a sale or a question or something. And if your notifications aren't on, you're not looking in the app, you could miss that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And like Brian said that he likes somewhere up there, he said he likes to respond within 30 minutes. That's a good rule of thumb. That's awesome. Yeah. I will reach out and message them. Hey, I'm not home right now. I'm sorry. But like, if they're mm -hmm. asking like, are there pockets on the item? And I didn't put it and I don't remember. I need to go dig that item out and I'm not home. I'll just say, Hey, I saw just so that they acknowledge them. I see your message. Like, um, so they're, they're not going to go buy from someone else. They're going to know to wait for you. So I'll just say, Hey, I'm sorry. I'm not home right now, but as soon as I get home, I'll check and get back to you. Yeah. Um, I know that one criticism that buyers have had of Poshmark is that they're not great at deactivating inactive closets. And so there are some closets where the, the seller is just not really on the app anymore. So if you can respond quickly and make it clear that you're an engaged seller, right. that's going to go a long way. Yeah, because they're going to go and buy something, buy the item from someone else. But if they know that you're engaged and that you're just not able to get back to them right then, they might um, wait. they'll wait and they'll, mm -hmm. they'll, a lot of times they'll purchase the item. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and our final know. tip is presentation matters. Use care with packaging and presenting items. So for um, Poshmark and Depop especially, um, people are expecting a little bit of a kind of trendy vibe in the package. Um, I think that on both of those platforms, it's also totally acceptable to reuse packaging. That's something I do all the time. Um, I mean, obviously do it carefully, do it thoughtfully, don't use junky packaging, but people also are buying on these pack on these platforms to be eco-friendly. So it's something that some people do appreciate. Um, when Poshmark first started, they really pushed this whole presentation a little too far. So for a while, it was super common that you would be expected to like wrap the item like a gift and include like freebies and stuff. And like, honestly, that is definitely out of, I think, out of favor at this point. A lot of buyers hate it. They don't like throwing away all that extra junk. They don't like getting free gifts that they're not going to actually use. Um, so you know, it, I, I definitely have also heard of people like they'll get candy sent with it and the candy will melt and ruin the item. Yeah, so like, yeah. it's just not Plus worth it. Food is not probably a good idea. That's yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so for, that's exactly what I do for eBay. I have the eBay tissue paper. I use some of the eBay packing tape using yeah. the stickers. So if you have a store, you get free quarterly. Mm -hmm. So get the tissue, get the stickers. So yeah. easy. Um, and it, at a prize yes. price I like to put a, a, a personalized note to, you could even put it in on a packing slip, just write, mm -hmm. thank you, a personalized, you know, you don't, you don't have to have fancy paper or anything. Yeah. Uh, a personalized note does go a long way, especially if someone's paying a lot for something. I get colored poly mailers too, instead of tissue. And I'll just slap a thank you sticker on top on the outside of the poly mail and then put that whole thing that in works. like a priority envelope or mm -hmm. something. You know? So, um, that works too. So, yeah, I am a huge fan now of these eco poly mailers. I think I will stick with them going forward. They look sleek. They're not that expensive. They, they say something to the buyer about the fact that I do this because I'm committed to the environment. And, um, all I do is I'll just kind of use a, a piece of tissue paper, wrap the item, tie it with a bow using some of the like cheap yarn that I'm not going to resell. It's a great way to use some of those, um, you know, like kind of junky or like partial skeins that don't really have a lot of value. Um, and, and that's it. And, um, I mean, sometimes it's even simpler than that. Sometimes I'll do a little bit more if it's a very expensive item, but, um, you know, being thoughtful, but not going overboard is, is really, really important. Yeah. So this guy was in Ireland. This kind of goes to the shipping requests too, but this guy was in Ireland. Um, and he, this is on Depop. He bought a, a vintage ashtray from me. Uh, it was like a Disney vintage ashtray. And he asked if he, if I use some bubble wrap or something just to ensure the safety of it, which I would have done anyway, but apparently he's gotten things damaged. So and that's I, exactly what Angelique was saying that those requests are coming from a, for a reason. So just, yeah. you know, keep them. And look at the feedback I got. Um, awesome. he, it arrived to Ireland and he said it was carefully wrapped to avoid damage. So, yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, if you, um, that was, uh, see, it's described, I think, yeah, fast delivery and item package very well. It shows up in your feedback. 
-hmm. when you package things well. And then this was another one. Um, I, she was so sweet. She was purchasing this whole located dress for her granddaughter. It was a really sweet transaction. And she I was, remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. She was so cute and everything that I did put a little extra effort and I did wrap that one in tissue paper for her. And, mm -hmm. um, I mentioned that like I'd steamed it to get the wrinkles out, but she might have to re-steam it a little because, um, and she, look at the feedback I got. So that presentation really mattered and do like steam. Don't, don't like send a really wrinkled up, wadded up item. Um, you know, you can always like, if something's been stored in a tub, what I'll usually do is I'll just like fluff it in the dryer for a couple of minutes. If it's something that can go in the dryer mm -hmm. and that kind of gets, or I'll steam it really quick. Um, get all the lint, you know, take a lint roller and get the, don't ship yeah. things, with pet hair, things like that. Don't use any scented detergents or, you know, dryer sheets, scented dryer sheets. Some mm -hmm. people are allergic to. Yeah, I um, have a really nice uh, Rowenta steamer, and it's one of my favorite things I've ever spent money on. I think it was a little pricey, it was like a hundred bucks, but I use it for my own clothes, um, and I use it for everything I sell. Yeah. So it's just super easy. I leave it next to my um, next to the closet where I keep most of my inventory, and just have it ready to go. So. Yeah. Um, this is Anne, uh, who is our guest. I just redid her thank you notes because so she has this is the back of her thank you card. So she writes in a personalized message and includes, so nice. and then on her other side is all of her information on where you can find her. Um, so she, yeah, do not Febreze. That's a good point. Yeah. Cause some, so, so you can do that, that kind of thing too. Of course, I'm a graphic designer. I'm going to shamelessly plug myself here. <laughs> I do offer these packages and it does provide a nice presentation. So these are some of the ones that I've done. You can see like you can enclose a little discount, a, a thank you. Um, I do stickers, um, mm -hmm. you know, store banners, all of that. And even the store banner and all will give, will give people a, um, if you have that consistent branding, it'll give people the idea that you are a professional and um, that, you know, you're going to get better customer service from a professional seller versus. Um, so these are the kind of things that you can enclose in your package. Um, so these are some of the ones that I've done. So, yeah. So if you do need help, um, definitely. And I can. I can just do thank yous for you. I could just do a business, whatever, even just stickers. If you just want a personalized mm -hmm. sticker. Um, yeah. So, so reach out to me. Yeah. And, and if you're buying something, it's also really nice to just kind of like, think about how you feel like the emotions you're having as you open a package and what you respond well to and what you yeah. don't like, because it's a really good way to kind of gauge your experience as a buyer and then adjust your practice as a seller. So I always like, I'll keep, um, thank you notes sometimes when I get ones I really like. So I remember what I liked about them and try to, you know, replicate that or incorporate those ideas for my own selling. Yeah. So that's my business account. Um, reach out to me. You can message me there or send me an email. So if you cool. need anything, but um, yeah. So, and then we have a bonus tip. So our other. bonus tip is sort of what I felt like summed up everything that we have said today. And it's so funny because Nay and I typed almost the exact same thing on our own in different parts of our planning document. And that is um, to under promise and over deliver. Yeah. So, you know, this is sort of everything that we've said comes into this, you know, don't downplay flaws, be honest about the flaws in your item, disclose everything to the buyer, let them know what they can expect from you as a seller. If you're late shipping, if you, you know, realize that there's a flaw that you didn't notice, put all of that up front. Don't hope that they get it and don't notice or don't care. Don't hope that they don't care that something is shipping and it's late or that UPS or USPS is, is slow on delivering, you know, keep an eye on all of those things and stay ahead of anything that could go wrong. And you will always exceed your buyer's expectations. Yeah. I've gotten feedback that says better, even better than expected, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, cause yeah, I will like, over described flaws and really call attention to them because you don't want that to be, you don't want to, you don't want to hide it because it's going to come out in the end and bite you. So yeah. Angela, that's a great way of saying it. Expect a six and give them a seven or an eight, a yeah. nine or 10 may be very hard to, you know, to hit if you are selling secondhand items that are already, you know, a little imperfect and we're all not perfect as people. And sometimes we make mistakes and sometimes life gets in the way, but if we can <laughs> hit that, we can still hit that, uh, you know, over deliver um, in some way or in another, we'll have happy buyers. So, yep. And uh, that's it. So, yeah. hope you guys have found some uh, good tips there and that was helpful. I know it's a little long, but we had a lot of information to pack in today. I knew that was going to go. We tried to like. 
so carefully edit down this week and we're, we're trying to keep things a little more concise in general, but we once again went a little long. So I hope that was helpful. And um, as always, if you have thoughts about anything we've said, if you disagree or have your own you know, opinions on some of our tips, we love to hear different perspectives. And um, we had some great comments in the chat. If you're watching this later, please leave a comment and add whatever you're thinking. So we want to hear it. So um, we do have some breaking thrifting news today. So um, so USPS has given their final dates to ship holiday packages, mm -hmm. USPS, FedEx, and UPS. So this article will tell you, um, so FedEx shipping line deadlines for December 25th, our ground is December 15th, second day is December 21st, UPS um, is uh, December 21st for um for three days select, it says to check the UPS website for deadlines for ground. And then USPS. Now I would really ship a little sooner this year because things are really slowing down. They are December uh, 15th for retail ground. First class is December 17th. Priority is December 18th. So that's, uh, yeah. So you, yeah. It's, it's coming. <laughs> so it's, uh, we'll I can't believe it's almost November already. I sat down the other day, wrote out all of my holiday shopping lists and am trying to get as much of it done this weekend as I can. I know I was reading that, like, I think Black Friday is going to be downplayed this year because they are really trying to encourage people to shop early. So there aren't going to be deals that we're missing out on as much if we do do our shopping early. Um, and I'm nervous and, um, I am already also seeing an uptick in um, in sales that I'm guessing are holiday related. So yeah, yeah, I, Angelique, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, that's a good point. So yep, and Here's yeah, Hanukkah is. starts November 28th, so that is really around the corner. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, it's early this year. Okay, so um, and then this you found this little um, yeah. Um, so I got this. I actually haven't watched this video yet, but um, it looks like Shop Goodwill is debuting a new website, which I'm excited about because I think we all agree that the current one's a little clunky. So hopefully, this comes with some you know updated features and stuff. Um, and I am excited to um, check that out in a couple of days when this goes live or tomorrow, I guess. No. Yeah. yeah. And then our market report, we do have a couple of sales. So Lola, this is yours. Mm -hmm. I sold this um, YSL pattern. It was not in brand new condition. It was partially cut. So I double checked the pieces. I disclosed what was cut, what was still uncut and did, did list it high. So I took an offer. I think I ended up taking um, $18 plus shipping. So I was super happy with that. Uh, I don't remember exactly what I paid for this um, or which lot it came from, but I'm sure it was, you know, almost nothing, a couple bucks. So yeah, not bad. And then I sold these boots that have been sitting forever. They were kind of cool. Those are cute. I'm surprised those not forever. Oh my gosh. They've been sitting for years. Like, well, no, not years. Cause there was on my old deck before it was redone. So probably about two years actually. Still, I'm so, surprised they're, they're yeah, like, they so just wouldn't, they wouldn't budge. Old. And I did, I ended up, yeah, they sold for good uh, sale I and mean, good size. Uh, yeah. I think I took an offer of 20. Wow, I was well. just like, I just wanted to get rid of them because they weren't selling. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so not great sale, but still, I mean, I, I was surprised. I think I did get these like either in the bins or for a dollar or something. Oh, that that's good. They yeah. weren't like. Um, and then I had, a, I've, I sold a bundle of items that like, I really wanted to get moving. It wasn't a huge earning. My earnings were only 24 bucks on this bundle. I think I sold it for 30. She had offered me 25 at first. I countered at 30 and she accepted it. That's not too bad for, I mean, those are like, I know Tracy Reese is expensive, but doesn't have ton of resale value and Pink Rose is. is yeah. That's like a real cool, low end brand. Yeah. That, well, you can see two of these items are on my old brick wall and I moved oh, wow. um, two and a half years ago. I moved in oh, January. It's just kind of nice to get them gone. Yeah, yeah. I haven't lived in that house since January of 2019. So that's how old these items belong. So yeah. Um, so, and this one was like, you know, I had it down to eight bucks. This yeah. Like 13. That is so. cute. It's so cute, but it it's just cute. wouldn't, it wouldn't yeah. move. And this, this one too, it was again, the old nice silk. Old. Yeah. 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 So, so I was, you know, sometimes just to get things moving. It's, totally. Um, yeah. It's a good thing to, to just get it. And then, yeah. So, and then we have a question for you. So what is a time you provided great customer service? We would love to hear mm -hmm. all of your stories. Yeah. 
And as always, you can find us everywhere. I'm mostly Thrifty Nay. Lola is mostly run mm -hmm. Lola run, except on eBay, where we're Cole Bray, Asterisk Dazzle, and Low to Hyphen Spy. And email us, nalothrifts at gmail.com. We do, uh, we'd love to have some more future guests. Uh, if you mm -hmm. have any ideas for shows, you know, we, we love to hear from our viewers if you have any comments. Yeah, and, and we are nearing the end of the year, so we are thinking ahead to next year and be great to kind of start scheduling out some stuff. So if you want to jump on our show in the new year, uh, contact us now. We can get that scheduled. So. Yeah. And remember next week we'll be mm -hmm. on on Wednesday, the third to talk about grand millennial style. So I am very excited. This is like my jam. So this will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little show. So. Yeah. yeah. So thanks everyone. Have a great week. Thanks for sticking with us for an extra long show today. And, and happy Halloween, everyone. We'll oh, yeah, see you after Halloween. Halloween. So Hope you guys all have fun, dress up, see some cute kids in cute costumes, and uh, and it's a great weekend. We'll see yes. you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.